St. Andrew's United Church of Cairo, Second Century Fund. St. Andrew's is an English language church welcoming all in the heart of Cairo. The church was built over a hundred years ago in the height of the colonial era. King Edward VII ruled over half the globe and Cairo was very much a European city. The Scottish Presbyterians resident in Cairo sought a place to worship and St. Andrew's Church of Scotland was erected in the centre of downtown. At that time, Scots occupied many important government positions in legal, medical and financial ministries. These pictures show Scottish soldiers arriving at St. Andrew's in 1938, just three years after the Guild Hall was built. Today, the area around St. Andrew's is a crowded part of central Cairo. Traffic thunders along a bridge a few feet from the Gothic windows, and worship can be drowned out by the noise of car horns and amplified street sellers. Friday, not Sunday, is the Sabbath day in Egypt, and every Friday morning, 40 or so people from Egypt, the US, Canada, Singapore, Sudan, the Philippines, the UK, and elsewhere gather for worship. The main service is liturgical, led by the pastor, Peter Johnson, who is an American Lutheran. The congregation is now made up of Anglicans, Methodists, Mennonites, Catholics, and others, as well as Presbyterians. However, this is not the only service at St. Andrews. The congregation extends its hospitality to other worshipping communities. Three Sudanese congregations, an Ethiopian congregation, an Egyptian student group, and another Egyptian church also use the premises. The African groups are mainly refugees and are financially supported by the English language congregation. There is also a more contemplative service on Sunday evening which people can join at the end of the working day. However, every day there is more than worship at St. Andrews. The church has a large refugee program serving more than 1,000 people each week. There is a school for 220 children who also receive a hot meal each day. There is an adult education program teaching English, literacy and computer skills. There is a legal aid program helping refugees find their way through the complex barriers of, to resettlement. And there is a psychosocial program helping and counseling refugees who have suffered in unimaginable ways. This work is supported by faith-based organizations such as the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, Catholic Relief Services, and Bible Lands UK, as well as international governmental organizations such as the United Nations. We're very grateful for the support the refugee program receives, but now we need to help conserve and improve the historic buildings which are the legacy of those Edwardian Scottish Presbyterians and which are used so extensively today. Recent events brought Egypt at the top of the world news agenda in late January and early February. These pictures were taken on January 28th. St Andrews is at the top of the picture. Two days later, men armed with submachine guns entered into the church compound threatened the three guards and fired into the walls and windows. Happily, nobody was injured and the damage was minimal, but the need for repair inspired us to think of doing more. Just over a month later, Dr. Martha Roy, our oldest member, died, just two weeks short of her 98th birthday. Born in Egypt of American missionary parents, she dedicated her life to the service of the country she loved and is celebrated for transcribing and recording the Coptic Church liturgy. She lived simply and spent the last few years in a Cairo nursing home. We were very surprised that Dr. Roy left St. Andrews a large bequest in her will, and this has formed the beginning of our second century fund.
Martha worshipped at St. Andrew's all her life, and played the organ for many years. It was a new building when she was born. It seems fitting that her legacy contributes to the renewing of the church of which she was so much a part. Now is the time to renew the buildings bequeathed to us by previous generations. The 1909 sanctuary with its Edinburgh built organ, finely carved altar, and historical plaques commemorating those who served the church and served and died in the First and Second World Wars. With its Victorian Gothic architecture of pointed arch and buttress, its steeply sloping roof and leaded windows, this is an historic church worth preserving. It is also time to renew the 1935 Art Deco Guild Hall, built with money raised by the Women's Guild. The upper floor was originally the minister's manse and now provides a library, conference room, classrooms and offices for the Church in Refugee program. The hall is distinguished by its light fittings, symmetrical simplicity and Scottish lions. The external facade boasts pilasters with lotus and thistle capitals representing Egypt and Scotland. But there is much to repair. The altar is badly damaged with missing pieces on the sides and along the back. Some of the windows need attention and firmly securing to their frames. Light fittings are broken and in any case need replacing with ones more in keeping with the age and character of the building. Glass in some of the guild hall windows and doors is broken or missing. The toilets urgently need attention and increased capacity. And the guild hall wiring needs basic remedial work. In general, the building needs a little tender loving care, and the scars of some previous modernizations need dealing with. We plan to move forward by installing air conditioning in the church. As well as cooling the space for the many groups who use the sanctuary, it will also mean the windows can be secured to prevent further damage as they are opened and closed, and secondary external glazing can be fitted over the windows to protect them and reduce the entry of noise and dirt. We also plan to repaint the walls, refinish the wooden floors, and renovate the altar and other sanctuary furniture. Two pews will be removed from each side at the back of the church to provide a more flexible space for displays or meetings. We also plan to install air conditioning in the Guild Hall, again for cooling and reduction of noise and dirt. More importantly, we intend to entirely refurbish the toilets and kitchen, with new stalls for the toilets and new units and cooker in the kitchen. This should double the number of toilets available for the 1,000 plus people who use the premises every week. The hall, staircase, kitchen and toilets will also be repainted and retiled and the hall will be rewired. The window at the back of the stage, which is an eyesore and permanently covered with curtains, will be removed and partly replaced with glass brick. If sufficient funds are available, we would also like to clean the outside of the guild hall and relocate the existing office air conditioners to restore the external appearance of this fine building. Four temporary classrooms and the gatehouse would also be repainted along with the boundary wall. St. Andrew's United Church of Cairo has a small expat community of 40 people hosting 1,000 refugees each week and three Sudanese, two Egyptian and an Ethiopian congregation. The church is a hive of activity seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. We would like you to join with us in moving forward into the church's second century by contributing to the Second Century Fund. More details can be found on the church website St. Andrew's Church Cairo dot com.